Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about Rebel Angels by Libba Bray. If you haven't read the first book, you might want to X out before I do the spoiler review. So definitely go read the first one. I really liked it. If you have read the first one, definitely read the second one and stick around for this first part of the review before I start doing spoilers because you really don't want to be spoiled about this book. So yeah, let's get started. Plot wise, it was good. However, I did see the main plot twist, the major plot twist that was probably not supposed to be very obvious but it was to me. Pacing wise it was all over the place in my opinion. Sometimes it was super fast and it was a little too fast and then sometimes it was so slow it would take me such a long time to get through it and sometimes it was perfect so it was a little bit all over the place. I didn't really like that about it. Writing style wise it might be a little hard to get into for some people because it's written halfway like a classic and halfway like the typical YA books. So it is written a little bit more sophisticatedly. The book takes place around the 1800s if I'm correct. So that's one of the reasons for the writing style being like this. But after a few chapters I'm sure people will get into it because I know I did in the first book especially. I started thinking that way in that writing style if that makes any sense. So that was really good about it. I really liked that. Character wise it was all over the place for me. I really liked some of the characters and I really didn't like some of the characters. They all had their good qualities and some really bad qualities and they made some decisions I didn't really like or reacted to things I didn't react to. And reacted to things in ways I didn't really like. I will talk about reasons for each of these things in my spoiler part of the review, but that was the basic non-spoiler things I can give you about the book. If you are wondering if you should check it out, definitely check it out. I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, so I did really enjoy it. It wasn't my favorite book, but I did really enjoy it. By people who don't want to be spoiled. You really don't want to be spoiled about this, okay? No, don't be spoiled. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so let's get started. I'm not gonna hold up the book the entire time because that will hurt my hand. So, as I said about the plot, the main plot twist that I saw coming about a quarter of the way through the book was that Miss Moore was Cersei. C Cersei? Cersei. I'm gonna say Cersei. I saw that right off the bat and I don't know what clued me in. I just think there were so many obvious clues. Maybe I read into things too much but I definitely saw that Miss Moore was Cersei. C Cersei. I, I knew it. I just and I felt so bad too because it was such a good plot twist but it was too obvious. So that was, eh. I wish that the scene, I'm still kind of confused what happened with Miss Moore when she fell into the cave pit or whatever that was. She drowned or exploded or I don't know what happened to her. I might have to go back and reread that part because it was a little bit too fast what happened. And I know that you can't really drag that scene out because she was falling into something or she bound something or, I mean, I know that when Gemma bound the magic to her, something happened to Cersei and that's why she died. I just don't understand what exactly happened. Let's get on to characters. The characters were one of my least favorite parts about this book and I feel so bad saying that. I really liked Gemma. Sometimes she told people too many things. She randomly sent a letter to Miss Moore about something she discovered. Now I understand that she liked to confide in Miss Moore, but it didn't make any sense to me to randomly send her a letter. I, I just don't understand. Why would you tell her? She obviously doesn't believe you about the thing, or you're supposed to believe that she doesn't believe her about the Order or about any of the realms. So why would you send Miss Moore a letter? I just, I wouldn't. I mean, maybe that's me, but I just didn't like it. Felicity got on my nerves so much. 
Je both of Gemma's friends got on my nerves, but especially Felicity. Now I understand that that horrible thing happened to her where her dad would abuse her, which is horrible. But she would react to things so terribly. I mean, Gemma would say, I have no power to do certain things for their friend Pippa, which if you've read the first book, you know what happens to her. She dies, but she's still in the realms. So I have no power to actually give her or help her in some way. I can't make any promises. And she would get so upset. She would just react in these ways that I didn't understand why she was reacting like that because it was ridiculous. There's a difference between a character flaw and someone being crazy. And I understand that some people are like that. Some people are definitely like that. I know people like that, but I don't like it. it just frustrated me so much. She would just be so offensive and she'd react in these crazy ways and I didn't like it. Sorry. The guys in this book didn't bother me as much actually because they weren't that big of a deal. A really major theme in this story is that evil comes in beautiful seemingly good packages and that was really major in this book in my opinion. For example, Pippa. She seems to be their friend, but she has obviously, she's always started to be corrupted and she's kind of going bad. And Gemma doesn't want to believe that. There are obviously signs, like when she saw the hunger in her eyes when she was looking at that dead whatever it was, it was scary, or how she would overreact to things. It was obvious that she was being corrupted, but Gemma didn't want to believe it because it was her friend seemingly good, and she didn't want to believe that her friend was being turned evil. Next example is Miss Moore. She trusts Miss Moore. She thinks that Miss Moore is this great role model in her life. And she turns out to be the person that has been her enemy this entire time. Seemingly good. Evil. I also noticed a lot that her friends didn't always support her. They weren't that great friends. And as I've said before, they frustrated me a lot. But I liked that she didn't give up on them. She knew when she needed to do things alone, but she didn't give up on her friends, and I really liked that. I found that ending scene really powerful, where they just sit by the tree and lay there, and they don't say anything, and they just sit there together. And despite all of the bad things that hap that's happened between them, despite the fact that their personalities clash a lot of the times, they are so different. They're still friends, and they've been through so much together. Love triangle. Now, it is never specifically a love triangle, which is what I loved about it. She never actually thinks, like, ooh, should I pick Cardic or Simon, which are her two love interests. Should I pick Cardic or Simon? She never thinks that way. Simon is the guy who she could have a normal future with. And if she went with him, she wouldn't have to be this Lady Hope order head with magic and the realms. Simon is blissfully ignorant about this, and I think that's one of the things she found so attractive about him. He had money and great social status, and he was attractive, as I said before, I think. But it was the fact that he didn't know anything about this. That was the thing that made her attracted to him, but I think that's also what made her not want to choose him. Because she knew that keeping the secret from him, if he knew who she was, he wouldn't want her. And then there was Cardic, the other love interest, who knew all these things about her, and he knew her different sides. The side of her that is Lady Hope, who goes through the realms and finds the magic and looks for the temple, and he knows this other side of her, uh, this boarding school girl, and he knows the side of her that's at home, and he knows her vulnerable side. I thought that was really nice contrast. It wasn't who was more attractive. It was Simon, who she's attracted to because he makes her feel special, and then there's Cardic, who she has this actual attraction with. 
it was really well done, in my opinion. This is one of the best love triangles I have ever read because it's never actually like, ooh, should I pick this person or should I pick this person? It's, I want to have a normal life with this person, but I know that it could never work out very well because that's living a lie and I can't do that. She never really picks Kardec in this book either. He risked the wrath of the Rakshana for her. He, this one part in the book where she's leaving his little hideout and she says how she wants to have everyone together be a, have a part of the magic. And he says, is that all you need me for? And she says, yes. And as she leaves the room, she's thinking, for now. And I really, really liked that because it kind of shows you. Like, ooh, I'm not real. So that's enough about me rambling about the love triangle because it was the major thing. It was so well done. Little break that love triangle so well. I was just oh, I'm so it was amazing. So that's actually pretty much all I wanted to say about the book. That was my review. I hope you liked it. Um, this wasn't really a book that I could ramble on and on about. There are some books where I just have tons to say about everything. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. I really liked it. It was very enjoyable. I can't wait to read the third book. I hope you guys check it out too. So now it's time for my random fact. So I was born in Buffalo, New York. And then I moved to Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, when I was about one. And then I moved again, but I'm not telling you where I moved the second time because obvious reasons. So comment uh, what you thought about the book or if you want to check it out. Give me any recommendations, like, subscribe. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.